Hello and welcome to a new release of The Sim. I'm calling this the procrastination release because it's been a while and I've been messing around with other stuff because I didn't want to get in there and start messing around with the bits that I've ultimately needed to do. I was playing around with uh, the idea of putting a car as a drivable object and I got around to driving it myself and I was quite impressed with this sort of arcade camera control. It works as a physics object basically, so as you turn the physics kind of lags and catches up, but that seems to work really well for that. Um, not exactly FPV and uh, ultimately it's not in the sim right now because there's a load of stuff other than just having the car there that needs to integrate everything else. And that is some effort to do and it really takes me away from the core functionality that I should be working on. The other thing I started messing with as well, just to make sure I didn't have to do this, was uh, the idea of a weather system, which may be something uh, that still comes in there, but not yet because I eventually decided that I needed to buckle down and uh, fix this. What am I talking about? Well, most of the time, whenever I receive a mail about the sim, it's from somebody saying, I can't make my controller work. Why not? What's up with it? And I'm always able to get these people running. I'm, I'm basically going back and saying, you need to run this, then you do this, and then it should work. And lo and behold, it works. In in real case, it, it is sort of RTFM. There's wiki pages. If you looked at them and worked through them, you'd probably get it right. But not many people read wikis. And I have to admit that if you can't figure it out from the program, then it's not quite as intuitive as I wanted to be. Now, to be fair, when you're dealing with something that can literally take any sort of controller, we're talking about sort of game pads, we're talking about radios, we're talking about USB dongles uh, to, to connect to sort of old radios or USB things that act as receivers, there is a lot of very different type of joysticks. So it's never going to be the case of it's literally you plug it in, it's always going to work because there's just too many variants uh, to, to let you do that. But we had to do something to make it a bit easier. Now I didn't want to touch this because the the whole joystick code is based around this uh, third-party native plugin that I don't particularly like. Um, it's somewhat over-engineered in the API and my interactions with the developer of that have never been great because we seem to disagree on how we should do things and it's no change in this one. I also had another difference of opinion with him. But anyway, let's let's move on. So if we jump into the sim here, there's, in many ways, it will look quite similar to what it did before. Let me tell you, the stuff behind it is really quite complicated, which is why I don't want to touch it. But um, let, let me show you what's different so far. So first off, um, if you've got like a, a regular controller plugged in like I have, you will see all the normal stuff. It kind of just works there. Now, there are a couple of very small differences. Uh, you will notice it now longer says, uh, radio debug it says advanced setup that's the new option and we've done a little bit of different things here calibrate stick still works all the calibration uh, is handled the remap controls work slightly differently previously i kind of felt the remap stuff was going a bit too far because it was prompting for the main sticks then it was prompting for like a reset and flip switch and then it was doing uh camera pan and tilt for the plane it's just Oh, that's a lot of stuff that you may not have set up. So now if you remap the controls, it will just prompt for the main controls. So we've got pitch and roll, throttle, your, and we're done. Now, so the idea of this one is this is your the basic setup. If you go through this, you should have your sticks working. And if you want anything else going, this is when you jump into the advanced setup. So we'll do that now. Uh, and what you've got now is similar to what you had before, um, except there's a few more options on. You can see all the normal stuff, your and throttle and roll and pitch is there. Um, as people requested, I've put the reverse control in here as well. I say as well because lots of people didn't notice. Here's throttle, for example. If we go and click on throttle, it says throttle R, R for reverse, and you see it's in reverse now. Uh, but this just mirrors here, so you can see we've got that throttle um, little tick there, and if we take that tick off, throttles back to normal. So you can reverse controls here, you can calibrate controls from here individually as well, and you can assign the functions differently. One thing I want to touch on, and is where I fell out a little bit with the uh, Rewired developer, is how the whole axis and button config works. You can see for this one, this is a FreeSky Tyrannus joystick, it has uh, eight axis and 24 buttons. 
Um, I'll come on to what buttons and stuff are later. There is a, a problem in, in the fact that if I use a, a controller like this, which is a, a DualShock 4 controller for the uh, PlayStation 4, and I plug that guy in, it knows everything. It knows we've got six axes, the, the, the last two axes, these ones by the way, and it knows we've got a bunch of buttons. You can see the ticks appearing, um, and all these figures are correct because things like the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox 360 or the Xbox One and general uh, USB controllers are kind of well known to the system so it knows about it. Every single radio or USB dongle or whatever is unknown uh, and what Rewired does in its non-intuitive way I will say is say oh we don't know what this is so let's say it has 32 axes and 256 buttons which is slightly ridiculous but the idea was it will cover all eventualities. Now I know that anything that says it's a Tyrannus style joystick has 8 axis and 24 buttons so I can override that. Other things like USB 6 and things that aren't recognised um, either by me or something or to the system will default to 32 axis and 32 buttons. It doesn't mean you've got that many uh, it's just a case of wiggle, wiggle sticks Flick all the switches and see what appears, and then you know which ones you can change. Um, I had words with the rewire developer saying, because I know at low level he can get the actual number of proper access and proper buttons, and I asked him if I'd be able to access that via the API, and he didn't want to change it because he thinks the way I'm doing stuff here is fundamentally wrong, and the way he does it in these examples are fundamentally right. Obviously, I disagree with that. I like the way I have it set here, and I argue that he needs to be flexible about what he wants to do. So he might do some changes, but it's not coming up soon. So at the moment, you just might have to cope with the fact there's more access and buttons than there should be. Sorry about that. Anyway, what is a button? What is an axis? Pretty obvious on this. That's an axis. That's a button. If you look at this, you'd be like, well, is this a button? Is, is this a button? What is a button? Uh, the answer is, it depends on the channel. What the OpenTX developers have done when they created a joystick, they said, first eight channels are going to be axis, next eight channels are going to be buttons. So it depends on the channel. So on this one, for example, I've got... Here's a switch, and it's on channel four. This switch is on channel nine, and you'll notice the button lights up there, because channel nine is button zero. If this was on channel eight, it would be axis seven, but it's on channel nine, so it's button zero. So it's a bit weird, but that's the way they've done it, so that's the way we've had to do it. And in order to create maximum compatibility between joypads and joysticks and USB things, I've tried to make things accessible via uh, an axis or a button. So a lot of the times where you might think, oh, on a free position switch, the middle be one and the last position be something else. It's not. It kind of works as a, a single switch or a single button almost. That's just to increase compatibility. Because I noticed on some of these USB dongles, you'd have the main axis and then you'd, the buttons would light up randomly on different channels. It's all, it's all all over the place. Which now comes on to what we can do with these drop downs. So we've got a kind of obvious one here, like if I wanted to decide that was the throttle or not roll, then I'd set it to throttle. Uh, throttle would be unassigned from channel for the, well, axis number two there, and I could uh, swap it back and I could add roll back in. But what I've also done is add in some more functions. Just before we get onto that, let's talk about the calibration, because I did notice when calibrating, obviously people are pretty good at moving their sticks around, but when it does the full calibration, it, it takes every input that you've got. So if you've not moved a free position switch or you've not moved your slider all the way, the calibration for that could be incorrect. As an example here, on axis five, we've got this free position switch and you see it goes to the center position on the middle, but it doesn't go higher than that. So what we can do with that one is individually calibrate it. So if we go here to calibrate, and we say, we can see the axis there, and say start calibration. It will say center the axis, so we put it to the center position, or middle position on the switch, and then it's asking us to move back and forth, which we've done. Got 10 seconds to do this. I've just put the numbers there so you know something's actually happening. And with calibration complete, we can then move it. We've got center position and the end position. Now there was a problem with two position switches. 
Um, because a two position switch, like this one, doesn't have a center point. So during calibration, the center point and the low point were the same. And you can see there that, oh, it's only going from center to the extent. And that's why we had a little box here to say access has no center point. And if you say that and then start the calibration, um, it will just ask you to move to all limits, which you can do, and then wait for 10 seconds. Calibration is complete. And now you see you've got the full range of the access again. So that should sort a couple of things out. And it was similar with uh, these things on like a PlayStation controller. And I think the same as Xbox 360 or Xbox One, but these could get calibrated incorrectly. So that should sort that problem. Right, now we've got that. We've got uh, a whole bunch of things in the, the drop down menu here. Um, everyone should be familiar with like the reset and um, flip where it's literally like that will reset your position on the quad. Uh, and Flip will do the same thing. We've also got a, a few new extra things. Uh, camera pan, camera tilt. Uh, that was specifically for the plane. We've got cam angle, which is your camera angle on the quad. Uh, for some reason, I've separated that out. And I, I sort of thought about, well, what, what do other people want? So we've got one for the field of view, uh, which is... Where did I put that on? Which is now that one and the other ones you've got here are flight mode so that will go between acro and angle the mm -hmm. angle uh, you've got uh, ext cam which is the exterior camera and you've got the switch between line of sight and fpv you can now put all of those on an axis uh, i think perhaps the one that people might use most is one that i've sort of gone with the idea of putting on either a slider or a potentiometer like this and that will be for your uh, camera angle. So that is then, uh, you can then do that on a, on a slider. And I've made that as a sort of zero as the minimum and 70 degrees as the maximum and stuff goes in between that. Now buttons, there are a few things you can't do on buttons because they really need an axis. And that's basically the camera movement, the pan and the tilt and the camera angle um, are all on proper axis and you don't want to do that on the button. So, for example, we can change uh, flight mode on this, so that on a button. And is there anything under size? So we've got reset there, field of view there, camera angle there. So you also notice that the calibration comes up for all the axis, but you only get the option to reverse an axis if it's assigned to something. Otherwise, uh, I don't care about it. It doesn't really matter. So if I go onto the sim and show what this looks like now turn the sound off so we've got the camera angle zero midpoints 35 high point is 70 that is if i do this that's the reset and then we've got a field of view change what i'm doing you'll see me move the switch back and forth and that will basically do that and then I've got on this switch, I've got the flight mode. So if I do that, we go to angle. So I can only go to there. And if I turn it off again, we we're back in acro. So it's kind of the rescue switch. Uh, and, and ditto there for all the other things like the line of sight versus FPV and that sort of thing. Now I did say really your camera wants to be on a slider or potentiometer. I suppose you could do it on a three position switch if you wanted. I've got the little uh, beta FPV controller here. So I've put a uh, camera angle on this. It's a little bit weird looking. So camera angle 35 degrees, 70 degrees, really great if you like a high tilt. Otherwise, I guess you can go between the two. Of course, you wouldn't really change this in the air at any uh, particular point. But uh, here's an example of us uh, just switching in and out of uh, line of sight and FPV if we want to. And uh, let's go back into acro. But you get the gist, you can do like a, a bunch of things now on it. So I came up with these as my sort of general, I think that might be what people want to do. Of course, if there's other things you think are really crucial to what you want to do and you want to apply them to switches or axis, then let me know and I'll see if I can add those in. Now that is about the whole update. Yeah, I said it was complicated, but not particularly exciting, but hopefully 
uh, it should get people through that problem. I will actually produce another video, sort of the, the idea of is like you've got a new controller, you've got a new radio, how do I connect to the sim, what do I go through and my sort of complete uh, start to finish of setting up a different type of radio and how you might do it. Uh, so if that comes out, that's kind of a bit of a replication of this with uh, much more detail about how to do it and how to set up radios properly through the sim. So next, well, I still need to do uh, a few more bits. Certainly I was talking about rates on the plane, which I haven't done, but I really wanted to get into something fun after doing this quite heavy and uh, sort of kind of dull thing, which means looking once again at the gamification, might put the car in, don't know, um, a whole bunch of stuff to do over Christmas so we'll see. Now um, the other thing I just did recently is create a Facebook group for people that are interested in the sim. I'll put the link down below. It's currently got one member which is me so no one's actually found it by accident. But I thought if pe people often talk about like uh, not being able to meet up with people online so you've got an opportunity perhaps there to uh, maybe join some sort of community and maybe have the opportunity to meet up and uh, fly with people. Um, also considering there is a, a beta stream uh, in the Steam release which I just put out recently because uh, especially when I was testing this I wanted to make sure I could get a few more people with different joysticks just to make sure everybody worked and as I'm coming to test extra features it might be useful uh, for to sort of open this up to a wider audience so if you're interested in that join the Facebook group as uh, I'll be doing it through there if, if I did it potentially for the next one or potentially if you want to drive a car and stuff like that earlier than other people but who knows. Anyway that's it for now more will come later you have uh, Steam release is out and if you go to your Steam client it should have already updated the GitHub stuff down below are links and there's email addresses and whatnot so you can uh, complain to me if you still can't get your radios working. Anyway, hope that's been helpful. You can, of course, leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down, like it, subscribe, all that gubbins, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.